I live in a gated community in Bangalore. I have this friend of mine, used to be always jovial, fun-loving, filled with positivity. I loved being around her. We used to meet during community gatherings and sometimes took evening walks together. About a year ago, all of a sudden, I stopped hearing from her. Months passed. I decided to check on her, gave her a call. She sounded normal. It was a casual talk. She told me how her responsibilities at home had increased due to the pandemic. She had to juggle between temporary unemployment, homeschooling of her children due to school closure, taking care of her husband when he fell sick due to COVID-19. She feared contacting the virus herself, added to which the lack of physical contact with other family members led to her feeling stressed. I assured a saying, it's okay not to feel okay. And if she required my assistance with anything, she could let me know. And we ended the call. The same night, I received a text from her which read, I need help. I immediately rushed to her house. As soon as she saw me, she burst out crying. Little time to compose herself. And then she started opening up about all her apprehensions, thoughts, and fears. These are in her own words. I feel depressed all the time. I don't feel like getting out of bed. I'm not able to take part in activities I once enjoyed, like watching television with family or even going for walks. I get panic attacks when I watch more about COVID-19 on media. Also, I'm getting suicidal thoughts since two weeks or so. What does this story tell you all? Can we call this as a story of bravery? And why is that? She sought help at the right time. Seeking help at the right time is the bravest thing to do. She has hence undergone treatment and counseling and is back to her cheerful self. As per the World Health Organization, one in four people will be affected by mental health disorders. How about all of us? Are we all feeling mentally healthy? How do we know if we are feeling mentally healthy? Is there a definition? Well, according to the World Health Organization, a person who realizes his or her own potential, cope with daily stresses of life, work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community, is termed as mentally healthy. It is also the ability to live harmoniously with our fellow men. Mental health is an integral part of health. In fact, there is no health without mental health. Depressive and anxiety disorders are the most leading contributors for mental health. 14% of the Indian population are suffering from mental disorders. Psychiatric disorders account for 7% of disability-adjusted life years. That is, years lived with disability, ill health, and loss to premature death. Has COVID-19 influenced mental health in any way? Let's look at the evidence. As per systematic reviews, which is the extensive research, during the time of pandemic, the proportion of depressive and anxiety disorders increased, and this was significantly associated with human mobility and daily SARS-2 COVID infection rates. As per Indian Psychiatric Society, mental disorders have increased during the time of pandemic. There is a 20% raise. Also, as I have observed, the number of patients at psychiatry OPDs have increased from tens to hundreds. Suicide rates have increased from 10.4 in the year 2019, 11.3 in the year 2020, as per National Crime Records Bureau. One percent raise over a period of just one year. Alarming, isn't it? Is India equipped enough to deal with this crisis? Well, India currently has 0.75 psychiatrists per lakh population, and the desirable need is anything above three per lakh population. India clearly needs more number of psychiatrists, psychologists, clinical social workers, psychiatric nurses. This pandemic has definitely created an increased urgency to strengthen the mental health system in most countries. Instead of holding the system alone responsible, can we be proactive in taking care of our own health? 
we can and we should. For that to occur, we need to understand mental health. Who are at more risk? General population, individuals affected with COVID-19 and their caretakers at home, healthcare professionals. They suffered from lack of adequacy of protection, fear of taking virus to their families, separation from families, long working hours, inadequate access to food, fluids, rest. They were the ones who directly witnessed suffering, fatalities. Persons with pre-existing mental illnesses, Persons with substance abuse, vulnerable population like pregnant, mo pregnant mothers, children and elderly. And according to some recent studies, females were more commonly affected during the time of pandemic by mental disorders compared to males. This greater sex difference compared to the pre-pandemic time was attributed mainly to additional caretaking and household responsibilities due to school closures and family members becoming unwell falling on women. Women were more financially disadvantaged because of lower salaries, lesser savings, and less secure employment compared to their male counterparts. They were the victims of domestic violence, the proportion of which increased during the time of pandemic. What can trigger mental health issues? A variety of factors play a role, like social, psychological, biological, or genetic. During the time of pandemic, factors like fear of isolation, quarantine, unexpected loss of loved ones, financial insecurities, fear of oxygen crisis, played a major role. It was a period of uncertainty for all of us. How do we know if you are at risk for these mental disorders? Are there any warning signs? According to ICD-10, that is International Classification of Diseases, the early signs of depression are reduced concentration, attention, reduced self-esteem and self-confidence, ideas of guilt, unworthiness, ideas of self-harm or suicide, diminished appetite, and disturbed sleep. Early signs of anxiety include persistent nervousness or tension that lasts for six months or longer, feeling restless or feeling on edge, fatigue or frequently feeling tired, which is not explained by any other medical causes, irritability, muscles feeling tight, sleep disturbances, palpitations, epigastric discomfort, and excessive sweating. Are these preventable? There are certain do's and don'ts for all of us to follow, irrespective of our mental health status to prevent mental disorders at an earlier stage. A healthy mind resides in a healthy body. So regular physical exercise, how much? Either 150 to 300 minutes of moderate intensity workout per week, or 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous intensity workout per week. Along with that, regular health checkups. Consumption of healthy diet. Avoiding food items which give us empty calories, that is, junk food. Develop new hobbies, it could be Having pets, reading books, practicing yoga, meditation, mindfulness, I leave it to you. Socialize more frequently, spend time with your loved ones, talk to your friends more frequently. Watch for warning signs, ask for help before it's too late. For most of the people, the symptoms mentioned earlier will be mild and transitory. Occasional psychological symptoms are okay. But if the symptoms are persistent, if there is a risk of harm to self or to others around you, if there are features of relapse of previous existing mental illnesses, it is high time you consult a mental health care professional. Make use of helpline numbers available. Your doctor will be able to assess you at the right stage, psychoeducate you, guide you if you require counseling or medications. If you seek help at the right time, you will no longer struggle alone. You can build better coping strategies, build better relationships, the risk for other medical issues will come down. Performance at work will improve. Overall quality of life will improve. The don'ts. Substance abuse, that is consumption of alcohol, smoking, recreational drugs, is a big no. Screen time on social media should be restricted to less than one hour a day. Studies have proven that increased screen time is associated with increased risk for mental disorders. Trust me on this. Get the facts, not the misinformation. New generation media platforms have relentlessly spread a mix of accurate as well as inaccurate information. Make sure that the information what we get is from authentic sources. Discrimination towards mental disorders should end. They should be treated like any other disorder, common cold, flu. There are certain things which we should not say to a person suffering from a mental disorder. It's not a big deal. It's just in your head. You have a great life. Focus only on your blessings. 
Well, what now? COVID-19 has taken around 52 lakh lives globally and 4.7 lakh lives in India. We were slowly recovering from the second wave, which was caused by the Delta variant of the SARS-CoV-2. And the virus mutated itself and presented with a new form that is Omicron variant. On November 26, 2021, the World Health Organization designated Omicron variant as a variant of concern. As we brace ourselves to the various mutations of the virus, are we ready to alter our mindset and eliminate the stigma, discrimination, taboo, shame associated with mental disorders and treat them as any other disorder? Also, let us all wear well-fitting masks, avoid crowded places, maintain social distancing, follow hand hygiene, take vaccines, and get tested if symptomatic. Remember, prevention is the key. Seek help before it's too late. Your life matters. Thank you.